Hi everyone, alright so today we're going to do a quick guide on creating immersive materials using Octane Render and you can see over here I'm using Cinema 4D which is my program of choice. Now when I started using Octane Render the very first time I was actually a little bit lost because I was a little bit spoiled using Keyshot in the past because Keyshot basically had its own library with immersive materials that you could just drag and drop onto objects. Now, uh, when I started using Octane, I'm just going to open up the render over here quickly. And I'll actually just minimize this. If I go to the live database, I'll just wait for that to open up quickly. All right. If I go to the live database and I scroll down over here, um, you'll see that we've got an emissions category. And it says lamp spectra, but I've got nothing under my emissions category. And I'm not sure if you guys... Uh, um, are basically encountering the exact same problem as me or if this really is a problem or if there really isn't <laughs> nothing in the emission category uh, but like I said you can see I'm clicking on here nothing's showing up right so I had to do a little bit of research and try and figure out how to actually create emissive materials within uh, Octane Render so I'm going to be showing you guys how to do that we'll be creating the emissive material completely from scratch so I'll just go ahead and close this uh, now you can see over here, I've just imported my, this is an object I'm going to work with. This is basically like some type of a neon cube. And then I just created a, a floor quickly, just so I can show you guys uh, that the emission, you'll see the light being emitted onto this cube. All right, anyway, I'm going to just start off by creating material just for these corner pieces quickly. And then we'll be creating the emissive material. So I'll just create a quick octane material over here. Just make this black, glossy, and just turn up the roughness. And just drag this onto all of these corner pieces. Then we'll actually get started with the main part of this tutorial, which is creating the emissive material. But I'm just doing this uh, just to show you guys the difference in materials. Right, so you can see over here, I basically want to create an emissive material for these neon tubes. So if I just open up this group over here, I'm going to select all of these lights and I'm going to create my emissive material. So what you guys want to do is you want to go to create shader cinema 40 octane and create an octane material. Then you want to double click to open that up and you can see over here the material type is on diffuse. You want to go to emission and under emission over here by texture you want to click on this arrow go to cinema 40 octane and this is how simple it is guys. Now, I never really played around with a lot of these different settings, so that's probably another reason why I was just having a, a really hard time trying to create these uh, emissive materials. But uh, this is all you have to click on, guys. It's called a black body emission. As soon as you select that, you'll see it covers this whole place with this. Uh, it's basically gonna, it's a, just a white light. Uh, so if I right click, I'm going to make sure all of my neon tubing is selected. I'll right click, go to apply. As soon as that gets applied on there, you can see, well, we want to, okay, it's really blown out, it's really bright, uh, but you can see that the emissive material is actually uh, taking place over here. So in order to control this light, we want to actually go into the black body emission. All right, so you guys are going to see some stuff in here that you're probably already familiar with, especially if you've used octane area lights. Uh, you guys are probably already familiar with the temperature and the power. So I'm just going to start off immediately by turning down the power over here. And as you guys can see, the power is obviously going to control the intensity of the emissive light. So that's something that you guys need to take note of. And then the temperature, our temperature slider is going to actually change the color or the temperature of the lighting uh, that's been emitted. So you'll see if we go all the way down, we get this really... Uh, this red light over here, we can make it orange or yellow. We can go all the way up and get this a uh, nice cool blue light. But I'm going to be showing you guys because the temperature slider can be a little bit restrictive. Uh, I'll be showing you guys how we can actually select whatever we or whatever color we want this light to be. So I'll be showing you guys that in a minute. Right. So this next section over here called surface brightness, you'll see that if I rescale this entire object so let's make this object a lot smaller right if I make this object smaller you'll see that it gets a lot brighter right 
So the surface brightness is basically uh, it's it's basically related to our overall scale. So however we scale this, if we make it larger, it's going to control the intensity of the light on our object. So that's maybe uh, that's maybe uh, desirable for certain scenes, uh, whatever you might be going for, but. Um, Ideally, you probably want to have this ticked because if that's ticked, if I rescale this now, you'll see that. Um, actually, I want to turn up the power there so we can see some of that light. Uh, but if we start scaling this, the brightness is actually going to stay at the exact same power value we left it at. So we don't have to worry about the brightness of this light getting brighter if we start rescaling our object. So that can really come in handy, guys. Make sure you have surface brightness ticked. If that's something that you're going for and then cast illumination that's obviously going to control the illumination of our light so if we untick that you can see we've still got the uh, emissive material here on our neon tubing but there's no uh, illumination or no nothing being cast from that neon tubing so I'm gonna make sure I just turn that back on all right guys so that's uh, that's the basics of uh, applying and creating an emissive material and applying it to an object and then adjusting the overall intensity and the surface brightness uh, for scaling. Uh, but like I mentioned earlier, the temperature slider can be very restrictive. So let's say we actually want to apply a very uh, particular color to this lighting, right? What we want to do is over here, we have the distribution and texture. We want to go to texture, click on this arrow, go to Cinema 4D Octane, and apply an RGB spectrum. And then we want to go into the RGB spectrum. So I'll just click on this. And if I click on that, you'll see that we've got uh, full access to whatever color we want that light to be. So you can see over here, its default was on white. So it's basically applying white on white. That's why it looks crazy like that. So I'm just going to select a yellow. As soon as I select yellow, um, actually, I want to make sure I go back. It seems like our power is just a little bit too bright. So I want to turn that down. Uh, but as you guys can see, the RGB spectrum is going to eliminate any limitations we had with this temperature slider because we can now choose whatever color we want this light to be. So this can really come in handy, guys. Uh, as you can see over there, blue, purple, red, whatever you guys want, you can start getting creative and start changing the color of the lighting in our scene. So I'm just going to take that back. Maybe we'll leave it on green. All right. So... Let's say, okay, we figured out how to change the color of the light being emitted, right? But how do we change the color of this neon tubing? It's really simple. Under distribution, we'll click on this arrow and apply another RGB spectrum. And this time we want to make sure that the color of the distribution matches the color of the texture. Uh, that's going to ensure that, uh, yeah, if you've got a green neon tube, it's emitting a green light. Uh, but like I said, I I actually prefer to have uh, this blend between like this white and this green. It just looks a little bit more natural. But if you want to change the color of the tubing, like I said, we'll just use the RGB spectrum. So I'll go ahead, try and find a green. And you see, as soon as I apply that green, obviously we'll have to play around and try and find something uh, a little bit more ideal that would match the glow of the screen that we see on the ground but yeah guys that's how you go ahead and actually change the color of the light that's being emitted so we can see over here that we're actually not getting the desired result right there's no real bloom or glow coming off this neon tubing it doesn't really look emissive we can see that it's in an emissive material because of uh, these certain properties like the light being emitted onto the ground and these little shadows that we see over here but again this material still doesn't look emissive so i'm going to be showing you guys how to really make this look like an emissive material what i'm going to do first is i'm actually going to apply black material to the ground uh, so i'll just say create shader octane material drag and drop this on the ground and uh, say glossy diffuse make this black and just apply a little bit of roughness got that nice reflection on the ground over here but like i said um, if we actually want this to glow we have to create a camera within our scene so if i go to objects and octane camera and i go to the octane camera you'll see over here by 
post-processing, we have this option called Bloom Power. As soon as we turn that on, I want to make sure I'm in the camera as well. But as soon as I turn that on, uh, you'll start seeing our... We'll get a little bit of a glow here. I'm just going to increase the Bloom Power. There we go. Now we've got a proper emissive material. We've got that nice bloom, that nice glow. You can see we can increase this, make it ridiculous. Uh, but it is this octane camera is actually um, I wouldn't really call it a, uh, would I say it's a secret? But yeah, this octane camera is uh, basically responsible for making our neon tubes glow like this and actually make it look uh, emissive. So make sure you've got your octane camera in the scene and then turn on uh, turn the post processing on and increase the bloom and then um, yeah, that's basically it, guys. That's how you create emissive materials. Uh, I've showed you, I've basically explained uh, the most important stuff here. Uh, I'm not really going to go over normalize or the sampling rate. Oh, there is one more thing, the light pass ID. So what this means is if we go to render and edit render settings and we go to octane render, you'll see over here we have these light passes. So if we actually apply a particular number to this light pass ID, so we'll say maybe one, and then we under render settings if we select one uh, that's basically just going to render out this light as a separate pass so that can really come in handy if you're doing any compositing and you just want that light pass uh, that you can use in your scene you can just render that out by applying a light pass id to it and there you go guys we've created our emissive material uh, let's see let's change the color here have a little bit of fun maybe make this blue as you can see, we've got the blue there, the blue on our neon tube, and surprisingly, the screen that was applied to the distribution didn't have much of an effect on it, so you guys are going to have to play around with these settings, see what you find to be the most ideal. Ah, but there we go. As soon as I applied that blue now, and we've got that nice bloom, uh, it's looking like something out of Tron. It's really nice and emissive. Uh, and one thing that you guys can do here as well, we can use these two, well, I mean, we are using them in conjunction with each other, but we can start blending colors together. So for example, let's make the texture, let's make the texture red. Okay, and then I'll go back and I'll make the distribution a blue. Like a, let's say blue like that. Now, obviously you can just go on Google and if you go on Google, we can see what combinations we get if we start blending colors together. So I don't know, maybe that's something you guys want to try, but you'll also notice that we lost a little bit of that emission. And the distribution actually kind of acts as a power slider, so it determines whether light is also on or off. So you'll see if I go into the color, if I make this white, the light comes on really bright. But if I go all the way to black, it turns off that light completely. So um, like I said, it acts as a power slider in a way, but the actual power slider controls the intensity of the, of the light that's being emitted. So yeah, you guys can have some fun with that. I see what you come up with. And yeah, guys, it really is that simple to create emissive materials. And I hope you guys have learned something useful from this tutorial. And as always, stay tuned for some more tutorials. And thanks for watching. Goodbye.